Welcome back to Benny's Custom Works, proudly supported by Valvoline and Spares Box. Don't forget Benny 5 on checkout this week. Unfortunately, we are pulling the Lexus engine out. Um, basically, I've done a whole heap of diagnostics since you guys saw it last. We changed the oil pump. Um, it didn't really fix the issue. And I have tested the oil pressure at multiple positions. I've even deleted the oil cooler circuit altogether. Um, it did bring the oil pressure up marginally, but it definitely hasn't fixed the issue. Uh, I've spoken to Omar at Empire and he is confident that the clearances aren't happy. So we're gonna pull the engine out today and take it down to him and hopefully sooner or later we'll get it back and we'll have some answers. So um, I'm not sure exactly what's gonna happen if we'll go down and actually talk to Omar about it. We're not taking it down there today either. Um, so keep that in mind. But the goal today is basically to get it out um, tear it down to a bare long engine, take the clutch off. We'll probably actually take the inlet manifold off in the car because then it means I can get to the top bell housing bolt because I can't get to it any other way other than reaching down the back of the engine. Um, but yeah, basically just gonna take it to him as a bare long motor and then I'll put it back together here. I'm also going to get, I've got a second set of rock covers now. <clears throat> so I'm gonna get some uh, Dash 10 AN fittings welded to them during the process. Then when we get it back, I'll replumb uh, both the rock cover breathers into the catch can using dash 10. Um, I did have enough forethought when we got the catch can made to put um, dash 10 ORB into it so that if we did do exactly what we are going to do now, we could have um, larger fittings into the can without having to actually change anything going on there. So um, yeah, there's definitely potential to upgrade that without having to do any welding. So I'm stoked with that. Um, but yeah, let's dive on in. I'm not super stoked about it, but I am happy to uh, move forward with it. Um, I've also spoke to Omar about potentially upgrading it and he has some stroker kit options available for us uh, that are pretty cost effective. I was actually surprised how cheap they are. So uh, yeah, at this stage, we're probably gonna go to about 400 cube with this, well, what was a six liter. So uh, yeah, it should, should give us some more cubes and some more torque and hopefully a bit more power too. It'd be really nice to get a little bit more mid range with it. I feel like it lacks a little bit in the mid range. Um, so yeah, having a little bit more um, punch potentially even bump the, comp the compression ratio up as well. Um, I did see one of the stroke kits I saw, or one of the stroke kits I was looking at, has a uh, 11 to one compression ratio option. Uh, that may mean we've got to go to E85 though, so we'll uh, cross that bridge when we come to it. But today's the day of pulling the car apart, so let's dive on in. I don't know what the cubic inch to CC's conversion is. There's probably an internet for that. Internet, uh, I'm sure someone in the comments will tell me. Taking our engine support bar out today. Do you reckon you'll find out any more clues in this one? Nah. Or you kind of just know what you're doing to fix it anyway, so. Yeah, there's no point me really pulling it apart. I just don't want it to like sploosh everywhere like usual. I'm trying to minimize the splooshing. Yeah, so early on in the day too. I know. Your coolant socks look too empty to me. Not feel, damn it! <laughs> Literally straight into the sock, oh bro. What is wrong with you? I thought we were friends. Did, did I make that happen? I feel bad. Yeah. <laughs> you literally made that happen. I'm just standing near the car in case Karma wants to get me. Who are you, Taylor Swift? I mean, I don't get that reference, but I'm proud of it. I think that's one of her songs. Something like Karma's gonna come to get me. I don't know. Am I taking the alternator off? I don't know. How's that not tight? I swear I tighten that. Oh, that's why this got no oil pressure. Because the dipstick was loose. I don't know if you meant like maybe oil was escaping and... <laughs> I could hear your brain yeah. braining. <laughs> I could hear the gears turning. Like, I actually love driving this car. Yeah. I just, I just get sad when it doesn't work. Yeah. Surely there's a bit of PTSD because it seems like the last few times you've driven it. I mean, the last one was have... self-inflicted, to be fair. The last one. Uh... Like, it was already broken and then I was like, oh, I just forgot about having to fix it and drove it again. Oh my God, why don't you use the block drain? Because the block drain's behind those headers and to get to that's a mission. Probably on a standard Camaro that has standard things, the block drain's easy to get to. 
But unfortunately, on a conversion, the last thing you think about is a block drain. Sorry, internet. Uh, the old sorry, not sorry. F's in the comments. I'm gonna keep that one dash six though, because it's coming out of just the valley plate. So trying to get a bigger breather oh, line okay. out of there is gonna be all but impossible. Yeah, I see. So I'm just gonna run, run what's there. For that, I don't really think it's gonna be an issue. If I can get both the rock covers to dash 10, it's only gonna be a supplementary breather anyway, so. Not sense of wire, so all of the loom is loose on that side, apart from the injectors. Injectors are loose. My least favorite design element of the LS is that you can't change the lifters without pulling the heads off. <laughs> Nailed it. piece can come off so then I'll put plugs in the lines and I'll put caps on the sump as soon as I go and delve into the box of goodness how many do you need three yeah can, you, you'll find two really no, no no they're in a they're in a case together oh, okay. like I made a grab kit that purely had all of them together come on man I'm more organized than that well I don't know you said delve into the box of goodness that that to me describes a box of loose parts, various snap rings. No, no, I mean like this whole crate. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, buddy. Right at the well, front. Well, that was easy. <laughs> that wasn't even scripted. <laughs> this is one of the many grab kits that I actually took to the US with the Cresta. Uh, and it's a, well, essentially it's just an AN plug kit. So I've got the female caps, which are for male fittings. And then I've got male plugs, which are for female fittings. And uh, yeah, fortunately we didn't actually have to use it in the US, uh, but yeah, we had plenty of potential to block off all our stuff and keep it sealed. So today we're actually gonna use um, some of these plugs and caps so that all our AN lines stay clean while the engine's out. It means I can do things like pressure wash the bay, um, clean the engine, because this I'm also gonna put caps on the sump for all the other AN fittings as well. So. Um, yeah, super handy if you do have a car that's plumbed with AM fittings to actually build one of these kits. Hopefully Jamie will put one of these kit, kits together sooner or later and it'd be really cool to actually just be able to buy it pre-assembled. Pre um, the other thing I did do actually, which is probably a handy tip as well, I've put all the part numbers for the fittings in each one of the, the compartments. So if I do need to restock it all or refill it, I've already got the part numbers on hand. So another little handy tip. And we're gonna go throw these caps on so we can keep plugging away without spilling oil everywhere for the next hour. Actually, the other thing, the other reason that these are really good is that it stops you damaging the AN fittings when you're pulling something apart. So say we're lifting this engine out and we hit that fitting, there's every chance you're gonna damage the taper, which will mean it's very hard to get that AN fitting to seal again. So these caps are a lot more robust than the fittings themselves. So um, yeah, there's minimal chance of damaging the threads or the taper. I do it on the Cresta as well. The oil drain is another dash 10 and it's actually welded to the sump. So yeah, it gives you good, um, good protection of all your threads and fittings when you're assembling or disassembling something as well. So just another thing to keep in mind when you're playing with AN stuff. Oh, there's that socket I lost half an hour ago. Or longer. Oh, hello friend. What was the alternate name for this twisty stand again? The actual name that they call it? Screw Jack? Oh yeah. Why, Jack's a nice bloke. <laughs> Sorry. No, you're good. Trouble, sorry. <laughs> it wasn't deliberate. I'm just gonna put these in loose. Yeah, so the starter actually was already unplugged. So that was that wire there. And it was the crank sensor that was causing me the grief. Oh, right. Because the starter should sit there because it doesn't, it bolts to the bottom of the block. It's not in like a well or anything. Yeah. So that should all come out now. Definitely don't love this old drain stand. I need to get a new one. It's a bit wobbly, eh? Just need a more robust one. Oh, more wasted oil. It hurts me in the feels. Do they design these um, oil trolleys without 
wheels that can't run over zip ties? Probably not, no. I think that's a prerequisite for any workshop equipment is that it hangs up on a cable tie. How do the bigger size ones over there go with the zip tie? How do they go? Yeah. Gadunk. I saw a toolbox fall over from that one day. Oh, wow. That was hectic. And the guy tried to catch it. Oh, sugar. Yeah, it was suboptimal outcome. When you look at these bolts, can you tell exactly where they, what they are and where they go? Most of them. Yeah, it's crazy. Some of the LS specific stuff I'm not right across. No. Well, I've sorted that out, literally. Go! Well, that bolt's not gonna rust. Ba -bam. So this is the moment you're testing to see if there's another bolt yeah. in the gearbox. But I don't, I really don't think there is. No, there's not. So this all I do now is just lift it out and go, see ya. You know him? See ya. Should actually check that length. I think I'm gonna change that strap to lift from the front and the back because I don't think I'm gonna get a bolt to go in that back corner because the headers are gonna be in the way. That's half the reason I pulled like things like the spark plugs out too. So it doesn't get hung up on that header. And That's definitely what you want though with the, the engine being far back, right? For yeah, weight you want distribution. as much setback as you can really. Yeah. I want to, I actually want to weigh the car, like corner weigh it. Haven't, see... haven't you already when, when we've gone to the drags? No, no, that's, that just gets the weight of the whole vehicle, but I want to do corner weights and see what the weight distribution is like. 50, 50 is like the magical number. Yeah. And I don't think we're actually gonna be that far off it, to be honest. So, asking the obvious question here. 50-50 mm -hmm. meaning heart, like half literally Half the weight half... on the front axle, half the weight on the back axle. Yeah, right. Which blows my mind because like, there's not much in the back. Like, but there's a whole engine in the Yeah, but you've the got front. the gearbox though. Like the gearbox is here. Yeah. I'm there. Yeah. Full tank of fuel. True. Like full tank of fuel, 60 kilos. Rear subframe, diff, tail shaft, cage. And, and what is that engine weigh? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know actually. All I know is that the aluminium LS to the factory iron LS is 100 pounds different, which is like 40, 43 kilos. Yeah, okay. Well, there you go. Random fact of the day. <laughs> BMW is obviously known for the 50-50 weight thing, right? Are they? I thought so. Hmm, maybe. I'm, I am not a BMWologist though. That is more your jam than mine. <laughs> of all the people in this room, one of us has owned a BMW. I, I do like BMWs. Yeah, you do. <laughs> you weirdo. Don't use any abbreviations here. What's the thing where it's like, you know, the, when, when letters stand for a word. That's another word at school that I don't need to remember for building cars. Acronym? What's an acronym? Yeah, maybe it's an acronym. Seems good. Yeah, I mean, we're coming out. I'm pretty sure the Drift King himself said that S14s are the most evenly weighted front to back. Really? I feel like I need to fact check myself on that one. That sounds like cool stories of Gian, if I'm honest. <laughs> You're just enjoying the sound of your own noise. Oh, I'm not going to later when I'm editing this. It's fine listening to yourself talk for the first time round, but imagine it three times over. Far out, imagine what you must listen to of my shit talking. <laughs> you poor bloke. There's, there's quite a bit. I could only imagine. Why won't you just release? Definitely needs some prying action. It's just stuck, like the, the, between the motor and the bell housing, like it's just sticky. Right. Cause it hasn't been apart for a, quite a while. Yeah. Believe it or not. There we go. Yeah, sounds... Separation. That's probably half the reason why it was a mission to get out because see how it's lifting, not level. Yeah. So it would have been so tight on the input shaft Are you gonna plug up any of these holes anywhere? No, nah, cause it's all coming apart anyway. Yeah. I'll probably put an AN cap on the oil pressure. Just so when it comes back, it's sealed. Yep. But Omar normally tapes up everything anyway. Can you grab the twisty sand please? Yes. Oh, 
that's much heavier than what I thought it would yeah, be. Yeah, it's not light. God dang. Yeah, they look like some premium cable ties. Yeah, they're expensive, but they work well. We have now got our uh, L98 out of the car and it all looks pretty good externally. There's nothing really weird sticking out or drawing my attention. We just got to pull the clutch and flywheel off it now. Uh, then it's ready to send to Empire. We do, however, have to get the car off the hoist because I've got actual real work to do, not just playing around with stuff. So uh, we're going to put the Lexus back on the trailer and take it back to my place because we're also out of space here at the moment. So I brought it in this morning just to pull this out and it's going to go back home. So. We're gonna load it up and take it home and put it in storage at home for a bit until we get this engine uh, back to put in the car, hopefully with over 400 cubes of good times. That will most likely also mean we're gonna to have to go and annoy Scotty and get him to retune it again, uh, but more on that later. And are you thinking that clutch looks fine? Yeah, it's freaking nearly new, bro. Yeah, thought so. Like, it's got hotspots in it, but it's, any drift car is going to get hotspots. Oh yeah, wrist pain. Now it. In before somebody yells at you for that. They're probably going to get replaced anyway, but find me in the comments. <laughs> yeah, I'll be the one to comment. I'll be the one to comment that. Maybe one day I'll fight you in the comments. You're a d Well, that pretty much wraps up the episode. We got the six liter out of the IS and it's now gone home and it's put back in storage. Uh, hopefully it won't be too long until we're slotting the, uh, the new refreshed engine back into the car. Uh, Cause I'm really keen to actually do a lot of on track stuff with that car this year. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time.